Hi everybody, welcome to Healthline. I am Gregory Zarian, so it is March. And March means that is daylight savings. We turn the clock forward, yay, we get that extra hour of sleep. We get more sunshine, which means you are outside more. You are spending more time, hopefully, off your iPad, off your computer, off your Fortnite, and you are getting up, getting out, and spending time with your friends and family outside. It's all about vitamin D. Another thing about March, it's Colon Cancer Awareness Month. It is all about the dark blue, the dark blue ribbon, ribbon, and it's also about having a conversation. Do you know what the signs and symptoms are of colon cancer? Uh, do you know what to look for, what not to look for? Our mission here is to pass on as much information as we can for you, so you can pass it on to your friends and your family. So joining us from Adventist Health Glendale is Dr. Avar Tenyan, whose specialty is surgical oncology and colorectal surgery. How are you, doctor? Great, thank you very much, Gregory. It's your first time here, welcome. Thank you. And we both have our dark blue on, so yes. we are. Yes, it's colorectal cancer awareness month, yeah, dark blue. Doctor, out of the gate, what do we need to know about colon cancer? Well, there's a lot to know. Um, we can divide it into categories, so First thing to know, and the, the question that people ask is, what causes colon cancer? Let's start there, out of the gate. So the, the most accurate answer is, we don't know exactly, but it's generally a combination of patient factors or, or factors that are specific to the individual and environmental factors. So when we think about individual factors, it includes age, family history, well, personal let's, history. Let's do this. Let's start with, with age. Okay. In regards to colon. Now, are the signs and symptoms, are the statistics the same for men and women? Uh, approximately, yes. Approximately. Yeah. Uh, as I was doing my research, it said that if somebody does get diagnosed with colon cancer from the age of 35 and younger, uh -huh. that is most likely hereditary. Right. So colorectal cancer, if you think about it, uh, holistically is really a genetic disease. Genetic doesn't mean that it's hereditary, but it means there is something genetic that p either predisposes you to the cancer, uh, and in some instances that, that causes a hereditary cancer. In general, though, there is an environmental component. So it's not just genetic, but it's environmental. And environmental means your interaction with the world, and in this case... With, with, with the environment. Right, well, in this case, your colon's interaction with the world, which happens to be with what you eat. And a lot of people don't eat well. And hold that thought, because sure. we're going to go to our first break. So here's a question. Do you eat healthy? Do you do more drive-through than be at home and create healthy meals with your family? Do you feel like I'm looking right at you, <laughs> and you have that cookie? I probably am. So here's an idea. Put the cookie down, get up, get a glass of water. As I say to you all the time, get an apple, get a carrot stick, eat a colorful snack. And on the other side, you will feel a lot healthier. And we'll spend more with Dr. Artinia when we come back. Don't go away. Welcome go back to Healthline. I am Gregory Zarin. So did you put down the cookie? And did you have a carrot stick? And did you have a glass of water? And did you also know that if you stand or move about 10 minutes every hour, you're gonna burn calories. So if you're watching this at the office, get up, do some stretching, uh, bring your feet back and forth like this, breathe in and breathe out, and also have a pack of nuts at your desk because that's better than that cookie, ding dong, or um, that protein shake that has a lot of sugar. Uh, and speaking of a lot of sugar, the conversation is about colon cancer, colorectal cancer, they're one and the same. And joining us is Dr. Avo Artinian from Adventist Health Glendale, and he was sharing with us before the break that causes of colon cancer are um, hereditary, and uh, they can also be environmental. So, doctor, before we dive into um, the repeating of the environment, um, genetics and the in spending more time on the environment contributing to cancer. Share with us a little bit of your uh, medical history. Sure. So um, I went to medical school in San Diego, UC San Diego. Um, then I did my surgery residency training at USC in Los Angeles, right across the street here. Um, I did a, an extra year of uh, what's called the colorectal cancer research fellowship. Um, and then I went to City of Hope and did both research and clinical fellowships in uh, surgical oncology 
with a specific focus on robotics and colorectal cancer. And then I took my first job in Texas at the uh, Baylor College of Medicine. Um, Giddy up. Yeah, yeah, in Houston. Um, and uh, I ended up becoming chief of the Division of Colon and Rectal Surgery there. Uh, and Baylor is one of the preeminent medical schools and departments of surgery in the world. Congratulations. Um, and then, uh, for a variety of reasons, um, I came back to Los Angeles. And our goal here was to start a uh, world-class cancer center in LA. And part of the plans for starting a cancer program included Glendale and Glendale Adventist. What's great though about the, uh, and welcome. Thank you. Adventist uh, Glendale is super honored to have you as part of their family. And what's so great about the Adventist lifestyle, it's, it's in the blue zone in, in Loma, I think Loma Linda. Yeah. Loma, Loma Linda, right? And it's all about health, prayer, diet, exercise, yes. and just living a healthy lifestyle. So, welcome. Thank you. Question, and it's just a, a sidebar. So, in Texas, yes. it's a lot of meat and potatoes. Yes. In California, it's... It's also a lot of meat and potatoes. It is a lot of meat and potatoes, but there's also a, a large conversation about health, exercise, living a healthy... Is there, are there more cases of colon cancer in Texas as per here, or is it just a mis no, the misconception? No, the incidence is about the same. Oh, interesting, okay. Um, and when you look at population centers, the incidence actually tends to be higher in urban areas, okay. for example. Um, what the reason is, is unclear, but you know we can talk about the risk factors for colon cancer and the environmental risk factors. Um, we talk about major risk factors, and we've kind of talked about the major risk factors, which are genetic, uh, personal history, family history, but the environmental risk factors are something that varies by, uh, by uh, location. So the minor factors are obesity, diabetes. We're, we're the most obese country in the world. Right. Which is and staggering. If you look me. at Texas, they're, they're much more obese than California also. Hey, Texas, <laughs> put down the beef. Yeah. Well, but also don't you find that with where we are in the world, yes. that everything now is an iPad and a phone and the family doesn't get up and get out, they are stuck to a box yeah. or a gaming, because yeah. gaming is a, it's an international pandemic yeah. now. It's a, that's a problem for obesity and so on. For colorectal cancer specifically, if you look at incidence rates, for example, in the US versus Japan, where they don't need as much red meat, it's, it's, yeah, Japan has much lower incidence, a uh, much lower incidence of colorectal cancer, but they have a much higher incidence of other cancers like gastric cancer, for example. But for specifically for colorectal cancer, the problem is environmental. So diabetes, smoking, alcohol. Let's talk about something. smoking. Yeah. Smoking itself is a minor risk factor for colon, colon cancer, but there is some association. Again, when we talk about an environmental risk factor, there has to be some interaction between the environment and the, and the organ. In this case, the intestine interacts with food, not so much cigarette smoke. It, it does to some degree, but the food we worry about are, or the foods we, we worry about are high fat, low fiber uh, foods, specifically, and we now know this, um, meats and processed meats in particular. So when you look at the World Health Organization, the World WHO lists processed meat as a group one car carcinogen. Give me an example of what processed meat is. Salted, cured, fermented, smoked. So uh, bacon, hot dogs, mm. salami, you know, stuff that, you know, if you go into the hospital cafeteria, we have every day. So if you were to eat, let's say, one hot dog every day for the next 20 years, you increase your incidence or your risk of col uh, colorectal cancer by about 20%. Okay. So for you hot dog lovers. But you can go to Whole Foods <laughs> and you can get, <laughs> and get turkey and bacon. You no, can no, get bacon. uncured hot dogs. But you can also get something called bacon bacon or something yes, like that. something like that. Um, okay. So for all of you that love your hot dogs, for all of you that love your bacon, for all of you that love your processed food, make a change. Once again, get up, take a deep breath, get a celery stick, and when you come back, your life will be forever changed. And um, I will be thinking of that piece of bacon. 
and um, making changes on the flip side. We'll see you on the other side. Don't go away. Welcome back to Healthline. I am Gregory Zarin. And are you thinking of that piece of bacon too? Uh, you could go to Whole Foods or Air One or any um, natural market and uh, get something that is a lot healthier for you. So one, two, three, in. I say goodbye to bacon. Uh, joining us from Adventist Health Glendale is Dr. Avo Artinian, who was just sharing with us how the environment and what you put into your body and what you eat and what we do contributes to colon cancer. And one other thing as well that I'm always redundant on, we're the most obese country in the world and it just doesn't happen to us. We make it happen get up, get out, and get active. It's just not something that you wake up with. It's something that happens to you. One second turns into a minute, turns into an hour, turns into a day. Our mission here is to assist you in shifting your lifestyle. That is why we have experts like Dr. Artinian here to tell us to put that bacon down. So what else, do, when, you, when we say processed food, a majority of what we buy at the market is processed. Yeah. So then how do we how do we shop and still get fulfillment in the foods we eat? Well, first as far as processed food, it's specifically for colon cancer, it's processed meats. Okay. Um, and again, salted, cured, fermented, smoked. So uh, that's as far as the foods. But I, the other thing I would say is everything in moderation is probably okay. When you look at a a 20% increase in risk, for example, that increases your lifetime risk from 5% to 6%. Is that high? In my opinion, it is. I don't want any increase in, increase in risk. Sure. Um, but everything in moderation is probably okay, as long as we try to do our best, you know, with limiting some of the less healthy things. The bacon. So when you say moderation, just say if I wanted to have a piece of bacon, what are we looking Don't at? Don't do it every day. Okay. But maybe what? On once the weekend. Or okay. Okay. So, okay. Yay. We saved our bacon and <laughs> I still, I still invite us to at least go healthier. Yes. Because again, as I said earlier, yeah. it just doesn't happen to us. We do it right. all. Right. And I uh, think extreme changes are very difficult for people. If you wanted to completely decrease your risk of intestinal cancers, you can go to an entirely plant-based diet and there's some evidence for that. Plant-based is supposed to be fantastic. Yes, but it's in this day and age, it's very hard to do. Because then also if you go plant-based, you then also fall more into the unhealthier carbs. Right. And, so, and in, as you were saying, yeah. in moderation, so yeah. the person that gets up and runs 10 miles in one day, they won't yeah. go running the next day. Yeah. It's a couple steps into a couple feet, into right. a couple blocks, into then dropping the added yeah. weight and just slowly getting healthier. Yeah. Uh, what else do you consider environmentally that we put into our bodies? We, we talked about how much, what is considered uh, alcohol? How much alcohol consumption could contribute so, to colorectal cancer? Yeah, so for colorectal cancer, it's a minor risk okay. factor. Um, but I would say, you know, it's hard to recommend any alcohol because there's the flip side. You can have increased liver disease, for example, sure. with alcohol intake. but you know, one a day, for example, is probably okay. Okay. Um, one a day on average with binges on the weekend is probably not okay. It's okay. like any other drug. If you increase the sort of the uh, maximum concentration in your bloodstream, it's probably gonna do a lot more harm. So okay. some people drink seven drinks on a Saturday night and some people drink a glass a day. A glass a day is probably better. And then back to obesity, <laughs> you wake up with this gut and you wonder how that happened. Yeah. You know how it happened. We, we, we know yes. how it happened. It's an interplay of everything. And obesity, frankly, we're finding is a risk factor for many, many cancers. Sure. And colorectal cancer in particular. But it also starts with your parents. Parents, you need to. We get you work hard. We get you tired. We understand all of it. If you invite your kids and your family to make a healthy meal together, because we've had guests on this show. My friend Melissa Lance has a book called The Fresh 20. Yeah. As a family, they create healthy meals. It takes just as long to do that meal as it does to drive through a drive through come home and do that. So start creating healthy habits at home with your family, because right. kids latch on to what their parents teach them. Exactly. And here's the thing, mom and dad, if you say I'm tired, your children are gonna learn to be tired 
suck it up, get up, get out, you're going to start feeling better. Uh, signs and symptoms. What, what do men and women look for in regards to colorectal cancer? Right. So uh, the signs and symptoms, the, the symptoms can be anywhere from no symptoms okay. to extreme symptoms. So it could so be a silent killer. Right. So generally in the, in the um, early part of the disease, there aren't many symptoms. But in general, when we talk about symptoms, we look for two groups of symptoms. One, are, one group are, are, are related to bleeding. Okay. So you can get bright bleeding, you can get black tarry stools, and sometimes you can get what's called occult bleeding, and occult bleeding means you can't tell. Your doctor will either check a blood uh, a hemoglobin level and see that you're anemic, okay. or you might do a stool study um, and find that there's a trace of blood in your stool. That's and but with doctor, when you say bleeding, are we talking about it being a stream, drops? No. So it could or be. Or it could be excessive. It could be excessive. Re I mean, colon cancer and, and rectal cancer bleeding is rarely excessive. Okay. Um, there are other diseases of the of the large intestine that cause excessive bleeding. Uh, colon and rectal cancer bleeding tend to be slower and steadier. Okay. Um, and the farther along in the colon you are, the more likely, and the rectum, the more likely you are to see bright red blood. But f frankly, most people do not see bright red blood. They see either black stools okay. or they find blood on a specific test, like a stool test. Uh, could blood in your stool and could that just be a, a one-off, like boom, it happens sure. and boom? Sure, there are many rectal, anorectal problems that cause one-off bleeding, but especially as you get older, you should never dismiss it okay. as a one-off. You should, any bleeding should be evaluated. And when we say get older, what age are we talking about? Uh, greater than 40, definitely greater than 50. Okay. Uh, when we come back, we're going to share with you what goes on with the colonoscopy, what you need to look for, and treatment if you or someone you love has colorectal cancer. Don't go away. Sure. Welcome back. Did you know that Adventist Health Glendale has been recognized by U.S. News and World Report as one of the best hospitals for 2018-2019, ranking 15 out of the 133 hospitals in Los Angeles and 28 out of the 414 hospitals in California? Did you also know that Adventist Health Glendale recently received their eighth A grade in a row for patient safety from the Leak, LeapFrog Group? Congratulations, Adventist Health Glendale. Joining us is Dr. Avo Artinian. Doctor, uh, we touched on signs and symptoms of yeah. colorectal cancer. Uh, there's another group. Please share with us what that is. Right. So you have bleeding symptoms and you have obstructive symptoms. So colon cancer, when it gets big enough, can pot potentially block the, the colon tract. Okay. And you can get symptoms like constipation to outright what's called obstipation, where you can't pass any gas or stool. So again, those shouldn't be ignored. So any, any symptoms like any symptoms of bleeding, excessive constipation, changes in bowel habits, things like that, especially as you get older, should not be ignored. Call your doctor. Call your doctor. Uh, just say someone ends up with colon cancer. Sure. Uh, how is, what is treatment for that? So it depends on the location and, and uh, the clinical stage, we, we call it. But in general, colon cancer, if it's not spread to any other organs, we treat with surgery. Okay. Generally, we can do surgery with a scope or a robot. And when you say robot, you mean Da Vinci? The, the uh, Da Vinci robot. Um, and in, in many cases, followed by chemotherapy. The treatment for rect the uh, rectal portion uh, is a little different. The rectum is the last 15 centimeters of the large intestine. That we tend to treat uh, with a, co a combination of surgery, oftentimes radiation, and chemotherapy. Um, if the tumor is spread, then we generally individualize care. So then it becomes a little bit more complicated. But oftentimes, even if a tumor is spread to, for example, the liver, less often the lung, we can still cure uh, a, select a selected group of patients. And in cancers that are stage one through four, mm -hmm. uh, where do you find most of the success rate right. in regard to stages? Right. So the earlier, the better. So when we look at success rates as far as treatment, Stages, there's a zero also, but stages one, uh, stage one colon cancer that gets surgery, uh, 
uh, without any chemotherapy has over a 90% cure rate. That's fantastic. And then if somebody, real quickly though, somebody, and then also to get checked for colorectal cancer, that's, most people when they talk about um, the screening, it's the colonoscopy and right. a lot of people are like, oh my, I can't do, but it's the yeah. preparation that yeah. is really nothing. Right, and, and I've had my colonoscopy and I can say that the preparation nowadays isn't that bad, so it shouldn't be a deterrent to getting a colonoscopy. Um, and we, let's talk about screening. So we, we talk about getting colonoscopies. Colonoscopies in general is, is part of the screening uh, recommendations. Sure. Um, and when we talk about screening, we're talking about patients or people who have no symptoms. So when do you start checking for colon cancer if you have no symptoms? That's generally based on risk. There are people who are average risk and people who are high risk. The high risk people fall into peop uh, individuals who have a family history, for example. But if you have no family history, nothing, we used to recommend screening at age 50. Okay. Now, in the last one to two years, the American Cancer Society recommends screening at 45. I love for that. So it's just preventative. The, right, for the average risk patient, yes. There are multiple societies that actually make these recommendations, but the American Cancer Society, what's called the Multi-Society Task Force, recommends it at 45 now. What does screening mean? It means a combination of things. It's generally some sort of visual exam, like a colonoscopy, where you look at the large intestine, and some sort of stool exam, like a stool test. And you're looking just to see if the colon's healthy. Right. And then a lot of times when there's a colonoscopy, people find, doctors find polyps. Right, right and some are benign, right. which you then, of course, want removed. Right, right, right. What, what is a polyp? A polyp, in general, there are many kinds of polyps, but the garden variety polyps we talk about are, you can think of our, uh, uh, the early stages of a colon cancer. Okay. They're precancers. And we actually, with colon cancers, we understand that there's a specific sequence from getting to a polyp or getting from a polyp to a cancer. So if you see a polyp, you remove it. Generally, you avoid a cancer. Okay. And most polyps are benign. But uh, technically, all polyps are benign, benign unless they have a cancer in them, in which case we call them either cancers or another term is a malignant polyp. Okay. But when we say polyp, we mean benign polyps. In regards to screenings, you, the age you said 45 is for men and women. 45, yes, for everybody. Um, somebody gets screened and it's every year then? So that, that depends on the test. So when we talk about screening, we're talking about screening as a whole should begin. So there are multiple modalities, so stool tests, visual tests. Generally, we, we recommend the colonoscopy um, once every 10 years. Okay. Or in general, and in combination with a, f uh, a stool test. So a, a stool blood test every year. Uh, I go every year to get a prostate exam. Sure. Can, can that Yes, the same. Absolutely. Okay. They can easily take a, a sample of stool and do a, a stool test. So bottom line is just get get yeah. screened. Yeah. In fact, you can even do it at home. Doesn't sound pleasant, but you can do it at home. And who doesn't like to <laughs> be at home when you're doing tests? Uh, doctor, what are final thoughts in regards to living a healthy lifestyle? Because I j before I came, I did some research. Appro approximately 140,000 people are diagnosed with colon cancer in the United States, and over 50,000 people die every year from this mm -hmm. cancer. So How can we make these numbers drop? So I would say the, the best way to drop it, or the two ways, one of them is live a healthier life, avoid the environmental risk factors, which are the things we can change. And number two, get screened, because if you can't prevent it, then you can at least catch it early, and there's a much higher chance, uh, risk, or a much higher chance of cure when you have a, uh, an early diagnosis. And give me your last thought in regards to living a healthy lifestyle. Um, I think the, the overall thought is everything in moderation, except smoking, don't smoke, drinking, eating meats, your hot dogs, whatever, everything in moderation. If you tend to live a high risk lifestyle, get screened. If you ha end up having a colon cancer or a rectal cancer, then there are excellent ways to treat them and to cure actually most patients nowadays. And we can do that at Adventist. Dr. Artini, thank you so, so much. And again, we both have our blue on. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, please go get your blue ribbon and let everyone you know that it is, that March 
is Colon Cancer Awareness Month. And that just means being aware, being aware of what you put into your body. Say no to smoking, you know exactly who I'm talking to. Instead of having that cookie, have some fruits and vegetables. Instead of running miles in one day, baby steps into living a happy and healthier lifestyle. Our mission here is to share with you all you need to know about being as healthy as you can be. You can find us on all forms of social media. You can find us on YouTube at Adventist Health Glendale. Follow us at, on, at Facebook at AH Glendale, Twitter, Adventist Health, LinkedIn at Adventist Health, and you can also visit the website, AdventistHealthGlendale.org, and you can always find me at Gregory Zarian. Remember, the most important conversation you're going to have is about you and your health, so why not start talking now? We'll see you next time. Have a great week.